All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are doing the Catalase Enzyme, Enzyme Activity Lab. That's one right there. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking liver. For those of you that have been, uh, had the experience of eating liver, uh, you're what we call unlucky, it sucks. Uh, but liver itself is a really all-purpose organ, uh, probably the, uh, well, without a doubt, the second most important organ in the body besides the brain. It controls upwards of about a thousand different chemical reactions in your body. <clears throat> and so therefore, it's filled with enzymes. There's tons and tons of enzymes in there. And in particular, it has a catalase enzyme. Catalase enzyme breaks apart, thing called hydrogen peroxide. When we're detoxifying stuff and things like that, the way we detoxify it is that we are able to go and to remove uh, hydrogens and or oxygens from the toxins. Those get put onto water and you form hydrogen peroxide, but that's a toxin, so we gotta get rid of it. And so that's why I have an organelle called the peroxisome, which goes and has peroxidase, or what's called catalase inside of it, to break it down. So we're gonna be looking at enzyme activity. Now, in order to do so, the question is, how do we know how active it is? Well, the way we know how active it is, is that if we go and we take some liver and we grind it up, and that's what I did, and it's ground here, put a little bit of this in here, and then I add some hydrogen peroxide to it, you're gonna notice that it fizzes like crazy. So any place where there is going to be uh, hydrogen peroxide and you put peroxidase with it, bam, it's going to react. So that means it's evolving a gas. The gas that's evolving is oxygen gas. Now the question is, how do you capture a gas? When a gas goes, it just releases it everywhere. So what's the best way to do it? We collect it over water. So what we do is we can just simply take some water and we are going to go and add it to this gas collecting tube. Now remember, water has a lot of cohesion and adhesion. And so therefore you can literally overfill it. So I'm gonna put this all the way on top. You notice that the water is actually a little bit over the rim. So I'm just gonna put my thumb on there, turn this sucker upside down, put it in here, secure it, and whoop, there is no uh, real gas up there. Extremely, extremely small volume. And so it works really well. So how are we going to go and do this? We need to get the peroxidase. So we're gonna take these little pieces of filter paper and we're gonna use this gas collector or reaction chamber, which is in here. So you'll notice on this chamber, it is tilted. So we're gonna put the uh, little filter paper that has the liver on it there. Then we're gonna turn it over, pour the peroxide in there so they're separated. So it controls the reaction. It'll only start to react when I combine them. You'll see that in a second. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take four of these Take one, I dip it inside the peroxidase, which it happens to be there. I wanna make sure there's not clumps and that sort of stuff, so I just wipe it off just a little bit. And now I'm gonna put the first one in, boom. Now I'm gonna take the second one. You wanna make sure you only get one because these guys have a tendency to really clump together. So once again, I dip, dip it to be able to get a nice amount on there. Take that. And come on up. There we go. So this guy's gonna be there, and he's fine in that spot. Now I'm gonna take another one. And as I said, we're gonna take four. Oop, that has a big clump of liver on it. So therefore, I wanna get that sucker off. By the way, what's interesting about AP labs, bio-AP labs, they are made to have error. And so therefore, start looking at this technique and thinking about what kind of errors there are? What could be done to make this better? So then I've got this guy, put it in, boop, boop, boop. stick it on, like such. And you wanna make sure that they are not overlapping. We've got a couple that are touching a little bit, but that's okay. So now I'm gonna go and take my hydrogen peroxide and I am going to go and put 20 mils in. It says in the lab 15, but we're gonna to go to 20. So I've got 20 mils, and I'm gonna put it inside of here. Boom. 
So I put that in like so. Now I'm gonna put the top on. Now we've got this here, the disc's on top, peroxide on the bottom. Now I go, boop. Now I wanna make sure that this guy is facing up in the bottom position. So I gotta go and shift it over, being careful. So it's like that. So now what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna turn this guy over, it's gonna react, and then I'm gonna shove it underneath here. Watch what happens in the tube. So now I come underneath, shove this guy up here, Boom, and what you're gonna notice is that the, uh, now we get these bubbles which start being generated and going up. One thing to notice about the bubbles is notice they're pretty equidistant from each other. Now think about that for a second. If the bubbles are basically the same volume and they're equidistant from each other, hmm, think about what's happening with the rate. So this is what we're doing. We're gonna go and collect the gas the more reaction you have, the more gas that you produce, and we're gonna try different conditions to see how it affects the enzyme activity. That's basically the lab we have.